everyone. This is Maida from the North Florida Gardener. I'm here at Susan Shelf's uh, property and we're going to be uh, looking at all her plants. She has uh, a lot of native plants, pollinator plants. There's a lot of butterflies flying around and birds. So I hope you enjoy. I just wanted to quickly say that it is a little long. I think it's more than 40 minutes, but she really does go over um, a lot of plants. Um, a lot of natives and gives the names of each plant so I would go get your pencil and paper um, to write these down so that you can add to your garden and she also indicates whether it's full sun or shade or part part sun part shade um, so that's really helpful she also um, goes over how she started these two beds um, a couple months ago a few months ago so the way she does it so you know everybody does it differently um so her method um what else um, there is one little part where it gets a little blurry uh, unfortunately my camera if i zoom in then i can't zoom out <laughs> so i don't do that i try to walk up to like a flower or something to get a close-up so there is a portion where it's a little bit blurry but it, it goes away soon so don't you know don't end it there um, I think that's it I wanted to say before I start it. Oh, I'm trying to think. I know I promised the planning video and I haven't done that yet. I've just was so busy with teaching, you know, um, after Halloween. It just gets really busy with the holidays and everything. So I wasn't able to do that, but I hope to do that um, over the holidays probably. Got to finish off the semester first. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope you enjoy and you get inspired. Um, and... Um, enjoy and I hope you had a happy Thanksgiving oh also uh, the tour happened at the end of October and right now yesterday was Thanksgiving <laughs> so um, it was a while ago um, and she also has a food forest in the back but I think the best time to do that probably would be summer I did film a little bit of it but you know nothing's really going on right now you know when it comes to vegetable or fruit um, other than I guess the citrus um, but um, so anyway, yeah, so maybe I'll try to get a tour of our food forest when it's more in production and stuff. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoy and happy Thanksgiving. I'll see you in the next video. So here we are at the front garden, at the okay. entrance of the house. And uh, I've, I've lived here for like 40 years and um, I haven't, I've always loved to garden but haven't spent a lot of time in the yard until I retired in the last two years. So I've also decided I don't really want to mow grass. It used to take me over six hours to push a lawnmower over my yard. Now I can do it in about an hour and a half and I'm on an acre and a half. Okay. So this is a new area I worked on this year. Uh, the impatience, the um, uh, amaryllis, amaryllis yeah. day lilies, these have all just recently been put in and I'm sort of babysitting them for a friend. They're going to go to her house when she gets her house finished being oh, built. Nice. And then I have the shrimp plant, the pretty red shrimp plant, which is a back. big attractor for um, hummingbirds. Although usually by the middle of October, the hummingbirds have gone to Mexico. Okay. Um, I see a little fig tree here. Yep, got a small fig tree that yeah. was a gift to me. Oh, we nice. don't know the exact variety, but it did get some fruit this year. It's as, as small as it oh, is. Oh, nice. This is a native persimmon tree. I don't know if it's a male or a female, and uh, it's a little young yet to produce fruit, so we'll see. But as you can see, I'm bringing the brain small because these will get about 60 feet tall, and you won't ever get the fruit when it gets that big. You can eat the native persimmon fruit, but they have to be soft and squishy. So are you doing like kind of, what's that called, espalier or uh, kind just, of? Uh, yeah, sort of, although, yeah, I guess you would call it that. A lot of times the espalier is um, attached to a wall right. or to pipes or something like that, and I'm just trying to bend the branches down and keep it low. Okay. Uh, this is the golden dewdrop over Here's here. The shrimp which forms a nice screen from car lights coming down the road because mm -hmm. there's a curve here in the road in front of me. Nice so and large, yeah. It has seasonal uh, value also because you have the purple blooms. It also comes in a white variety, mm -hmm. but it's followed by these orange berries. Oh, so okay. in the fall, later in the fall, this will be covered with uh, little orange berries. 
not edible, maybe to the wildlife, but not to us. So it has some uh, good features throughout the year. Um, and, and your focus with your garden is for it to be a pollinator. I so. like, po yes, I've tried to do pollinators or things for wildlife. Oh, not all of it, but a lot of it. Here's the shrimp, shrimp plant. Okay. Uh, this is a little, a little native tree. So is it mostly native or? Not everything I have is native. No, I did a lot. In fact, I made a lot of mistakes and also had a lot of invasives in the yard I've had to pull out over the years. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and I have some things in the yard that will probably someday be considered invasive um, right. that I'm growing right now, but they seem to be pretty aggressive. But this is a little native tree. This is a hog plum tree. Hog and plum. when you're out in the, uh, woods or driving through a wooded area in the spring, the branches are covered with white flowers. And those are the small trees that you'll see on the side of the road, just loaded with little white flowers. Hmm. Then it produces a fruit, which is good for wildlife. You can make jelly from it. Anything will taste good if you add enough sugar, right. but it's not really a, a something you would pick off the tree and eat. <laughs> And so there's a Chickasaw it. plum and a hog plum. This is a hog plum. Hog plum, okay. Uh, and what is the purple plant again? I forget. Purple queen, purple, purple, queen. purple dude. They hmm? changed the name. <laughs> um, yeah, who knows? <laughs> but it, it, some people consider that rather aggressive. I like it to border my plant areas uh -huh. because it gives a nice pop of color. And there are underplanted, although they have died back with a red leaf palladium. Oh, okay. So the purple and the red leaves were spectacular together. Right. This uh -huh. is some um, flame. Uh-huh. Red blaze, I'm sorry, red blaze. And um, so this these was were just, all throughout. Yes. Yeah. And then with the purple and the red it gave a very nice tropical appearance. And then the periodic yellow uh, of the day, day lilies. lilies, and then in the spring, the red and uh, pink amaryllis. Real pretty. But butterflies everywhere. Lots of butterflies. I'm going to try to catch them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can walk up here to the front. And here, this is an annual? I yes, think? it's an annual. It's something you can buy at the big box stores. It's called Torina or Wishbone Flower. Okay. It might come back after the winter, but it's not definite that they'll come back. Right, right. This is a little, nice um, little pop of color. Though. Yeah, uh, goldenrod. Oh, yeah. Which just kind of popped up on its own. And there's a little aster. Oh. A little wild aster that's in there, too. Yeah, I see. Yeah, the goldenrod is everywhere now. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's lovely. And I have a few more natives out here. Kind of a cottage garden area. Okay. So. This is a crinum lily with the red leaves. Ooh, okay. Not not any blossoms on it right now. And a cana lily behind it. So That's, I like to mix up the colors, the greens, the burgundies, the reds. So you gave me one of those. Oh good. And it's it's probably a little bit larger than that even. Oh yeah. I think I might have three or four coming up. Well we've gone through kind of a dry spot. If we'd had more rain recently, it probably would be much bigger. Yeah. This is a tropical sage. This uh, oh, okay. we have a red and a white. And I are these I think these are the natives? They are supposed to be natives. They're probably a cultivated native variety. Right. But um, I did take a butterfly gardening class. Uh, and they said the red tropical sage was the number one butterfly attractant oh. that they love. I have this to get is, some of that. Yeah. This is Gara. Oh. Now, Gara oh, to get this. <laughs> is native, but this is a cultivated native, so it's a little more uh, showy. The flowers right. are a little more showy. And then behind it is a penta, the red penta, and there is a gulf fritterary on it. Yep. Oops, there, there it goes. Oh, oh, did I get it? I think I got it. <laughs> there it is. So my penta, so is that penta, like, have you had it a while, or? No, most of the flowers in this area were just put in this year. So is that one plant or several plants? That's one plant. Wow, so mine, yep. I think my problem is sun. Oh, there's the butterfly. They do like sun. Yeah. And there is a soaker hose down here, so it might be close to the soaker hose. That oh. might be why it's happy. So one of my favorite things to use after I plant things are soaker hoses to get them going because, um, 
I try not to use my irrigation system, which wastes some water. Right. It's not very effective for watering. But the soaker hose, I can just barely turn it on and water a large area and get the water to where it needs to be at the roots of the plant. Yeah. I had one of those years ago. I have to get another one. Mm -hmm. And they're inexpensive. Yeah. Is so, that little purple? Is that aster? No, that, well, that's a native called blue mist. Yes. Or ageratum? Mm, no. Might be. It Maybe. might be. I need to get the exact Latin name. Oh, okay. That's something I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I have a hard time with that. Sometimes in the blog, in the Facebook group, they only use the, those names, and I have no idea what they're yep. talking about. <laughs> I have to look them up. Golf the the loving the pinta. <laughs> and these are four o'clock, I believe. Yes. And if you were here later in the day, that would just be covered in pink flowers. Oh, so they open up at e they open in the evening. late afternoon, oh. and they will stay open until the morning sun hits them. Oh. So they're pollinated mostly by moths, and a lot of people think they see butterflies on them, but they're actually a, or hummingbirds on them, but that it's actually a hummingbird moth that oh. comes to them in the evenings. You know, I, I think I might have seen that in my yard. I thought it was a really teeny tiny <laughs> hummingbird. And it's a moth. Oh, okay. Here's another little native. Oh, okay. Little spotted horse mint, oh, okay. and uh, they come in whites and lavenders. Mm -hmm. So, did you go to the Kanapaha? Yeah, I was out of town. I was so upset. I, was like, <laughs> I really wanted to go to well, that. Go, go after you leave here. Yeah, because oh. it's 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 today too. Oh, I thought it was just Saturday. No, nope. today oh. too. Oh, okay. Maybe this this is a little jasmine. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm sorry, none of them are open. This is an an uh, Arabic jasmine uh -huh. and um, it's very fragrant and it's kind of growing all over in this area. Right, right. It's kind of sticking up everywhere. Uh, let's, let's, okay, let's touch the, touch. Oh, okay. These are called yellow tops and okay. it is a native plant. It's sort of post bloom as you can see some of the blooms have already gone down. Right. But uh, pretty yellow flowers. And then right beside it is porter weed with the little purple oh, flowers. Oh, you do have four. I remember I was going to yeah, bring you some. Yeah, porter you. weed. And then someone gave me this grass. It's a pinstamon, but uh -huh. I don't know the exact name. I think it's something princess, but I, I don't remember. Does that come back? I don't know. It's the first year I've oh, planted okay. it. <laughs> okay. I got, I've gotten a lot of gifts from people, so I... This is one of those plants that you see a lot in like the North Carolina blogs and mm. I wonder, is it native here? Can it, you know, does it come My back? My neighbor's growing it and I see it every year and I don't know if he's replanted it or that is uh, mm. coming back every year. Right. Now the plant right next to it is called Snow Square Stem That's and this cute. is a native. It oh, is nice. another big pollinator attractor. But the bees are usually what's attracted to it. Little native bees. Right, I so see. I don't see too many. I only see one at the moment. Oh, there's one. Oh, okay. Then there I've seen two. <laughs> so the little native bees come to it. Occasionally I see a butterfly, but usually it's bees. There we go. See the black bee right next to it? Yeah. Ah, they're almost side by side. I can't zoom in with this camera. It won't let me zoom out. So that's why I try to just get close. Sure. But yeah. Okay, Great. So that's that's it for because I'm trying to get rid of my grass, this area was grass mm -hmm. up until this spring, this past spring. Okay. So now I just have a little eyebrow, eyebrow of grass out here right. for the neighbors, so it kind of looks normal. Right, right. And then what I did was I laid down um, cardboard. Uh -huh. I go around on recycling day, I gather up all my neighbor's cardboard, <laughs> and on top of that I piled leaves that I pick up at the curbside. Okay. Then I plant through the leaves. So what you see here is... Do you mulch the leaves? Do you cut them? Nope. Or just, just okay. sheet composting, it's called, where you just lay them on out there. Okay. Grass clippings and leaves. So what I did then, I underplanted with um, sweet potatoes because the sweet potato vines will cover the area, keep your moisture in, and uh, give you some ground cover. And then I got a bag of organic beans and peas uh -huh. and threw them out there because they're nitrogen fixers. So that's going to improve my soil. And then I started planting. So as you can see, I bought some inexpensive little mums for the season. Right. right. Uh, I did edge it with border grass. And then I've got um, some edibles hidden in here as well as ornamentals. So the taller plants. Mm -hmm. In the back, I see. Yep. That's an edible root plant. And you can see the ornamental grasses. 
Right. And then there's also some daylilies tucked in there, and uh, there's some milkweed hidden in there. <laughs> um, most of this is going to be gone this winter. It will all go dormant, but I will add more leaves and mulch to the area to make it look nice. And I keep the border grass because that's an evergreen, so mm -hmm. it kind of delineates the fact that I have something in here. Um, um, and this is a lily rope. Lily rope? Uh, Can't probably, say yeah, liriope. 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 Okay. liriope. Uh, people call it different things border grass, monkey grass. Um, right. So that's growing in there. But there's a lot of little plants tucked in, but they're hidden under the, the bean plants right now. Okay. So I could potentially harvest the beans and eat them, uh, but I will probably just let everything die down and that will help the fertility of the soil because I have very poor sandy soil like most of Florida. Right, right, right. <laughs> so in the spring, do yes, you, so it all dies back, you just leave it there and till it in or just? I just leave it, let okay. it die down and enrich the soil. And then in the spring, if I see I need to replant my perennials that are in there, hidden mm -hmm. in there, I have some daylilies and uh, milkweed and uh, blackberry lilies. Uh, things like that. If I need to replant, I can. Okay. But you leave it there. You don't pull it up. No. Or pull it out. Okay. No. I'm okay. just gonna leave it. Yeah. No, I'm a kind of a lazy gardener. No. Well, I've I'll heard... just cover it up. <laughs> cover it up I've with more it's, leaves. It's <laughs> supposed to be good for the soil, so that's <laughs> just, right. Just wanted to. Yep. And I see in the back you have some fire spike. Fire spike. Yeah. Yes. And it it blooms late in the season. Unfortunately, about the time it blooms, the hummingbirds have left because it's a gorgeous red tubular flower that would be perfect for hummingbirds but the sulfur butterflies start uh, coming through uh -huh. as they're moving south for the winter and they will start coming and visiting after the hummingbirds leave and these are all looks like azaleas azaleas yeah. yes and i need to cut them back they they sort of took over right and i've got a lot of uh, weedy vines in there so yeah. i'm slowly working my way through that but you don't want to cut your azaleas after july 4th right because you cut off next year's blooms right 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 all right oh this is beautiful it's so lush so this is my goal <laughs> is to have a lush garden it just feels so sparse well it looks so lush because i threw a lot of vegetables in there <laughs> yeah. i mean can you see all these beans coming up oh yeah <laughs> zipper peas. Those are zipper peas I've uh -huh. got growing in there. Oh, here's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so when they're when they start to turn yellow, you can pick them and eat them. So this this is a full sun area. Pretty much. Well, yeah. morning morning shade, but um, it's hot out here. Very hot and sunny from, from probably about noon on. Yeah. So I have an area that I want to start. Well, could I plant this now or is it too late? I think it's a little too late. Yeah. Our average first frost date is the middle of November, mm -hmm. and that's only like three weeks away. And most of your your, um, I mean, you can put out seeds. It'll it'll improve the soil, but they may not get big enough to make too much of a difference. But right. what you could do right now is buy annual ryegrass seed. Oh, okay. So you can get like a 50 pound bag for less than 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. You can overseed your lawn and mm -hmm. it will help your lawn, but you could also throw it out in your planting beds and just let it grow. And then in this, um, when the weather gets hot again, the ryegrass dies. Right, right. But that will improve your soil during the winter months. And clovers, <laughs> if you want to do clovers. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll try that. So. Very nice. Do you want to go this way? Or? Yeah, let's walk down this way. What is this with the, uh, I don't know what that is. That's this, the seeds from the four o'clocks. Oh, really? Yeah. Gosh, that's pretty. So. I mean, <laughs> even without the flowers, that's pretty. So they just spread everywhere, as you can imagine, each, each one of those seeds, you know. Yeah. And they, they are, they do grow pretty easily. Yeah. They'll overwinter and come back. Okay. Okay, here's the other side of the entrance. Other side of the driveway. Yeah. Uh, so this area out here gets no, has no irrigation in the past and I finally decided I had to do something or else things wouldn't grow. So I do have a soaker hose down here. This I started hmm, six months ago. Um, a lot of things have already bloomed and died back. Mm -hmm. uh, I had milkweed, I have all kinds of little irises, um, zinnias. Uh, things that have already died down but you can see I still have marigolds mm -hmm. 
and they're happy and the French marigolds also help with the um, keeping the nematodes away so they're excellent anywhere in the garden okay um behind it is the little wild aster yeah, and it beautiful. is really putting on a show right now that's gorgeous i didn't plant that it just came up on its own oh really that's just a native as you can see there's a lot of native bees around it too mm -hmm. this is the philippine violet oh okay. this is a, white, a white one, one. yeah there's purple and there's white and there's lantana, of course. I like the yellow trailing lantana. It does not produce noticeable berries. At least I haven't seen berries because they are saying lantana could possibly be, I guess, an invasive plant now. But the trailing oh. lantana, I don't see berries on. So I'm thinking this is going to stay put. Right, right. Um, uh, one of my crinums is blooming, but you can see the bloom is down on the ground. They don't stand oh, upright. Wow. This and it's a, a huge, huge one. it's a huge bloom, yeah. But it's, you really don't see it unless you're right there looking. This I have one of those crinums that it looks like is a lily. Which There's different ones. Yeah. Th this is, even though it's yellow, this is called orange coneflower. Oh. And um, so this is the first year I've grown it, and I should have put it back further. It's, it's too tall for the front of the bed. Right. There's plumbago, oh, the I blue see. flower. It, yeah. There is, um, that is Fakahatchee grass, which is a native grass. Mm -hmm. uh, it hasn't put out any uh, seed or anything because it's a fairly new, uh, new plant I put mm -hmm. in the ground. This is the blue mist flower again. Isn't this marvelous? Oh, that's beautiful, ah, yeah. Nice big splash of blue. Oh, I would love that in my yard. But is this full sun also? Yes, this yes, is definitely is. hot. <laughs> Here in the front, I also have some wild uh, things that came in that I did not plant. This is called fog fruit. Mm -hmm. And none of the, oh, there's a flower. Oh, I'm going to pick a flower so you can see oh. it. <laughs> tiny. They're very tiny. Oops, sorry. But when they, um, But when the whole area is covered in uh -huh. flowers, it's really pretty. And it, it tends, tends to like moist areas, so I think the um, soaker hose has really promoted its growth. Right. So it has come in and taken over. That little purple flower back there, that's obedient plant, which is another native. Okay. And uh, more daylilies in here. So it looks like you've plugged in native plants where, wherever yeah. you can? Yes, wherever I can, and when I have the money, because they do sometimes cost a little more. Yeah. Um, this is a flax uh, flower, um, flax plant. The variegated? Yes, isn't that pretty? Yeah, that is pretty. And there's some more crinum lilies planted back there, some green ones, and there's another reddish colored mm -hmm. one. And I did not trim up this uh, cedar tree because I have a corner up here and the street light or the car lights come blazing in here. So it cuts down on the light. This is a chase tree. It's not blooming right now, oh, but they okay. come in both a lavender and a white. They're sort of a short lived tree. I'm going to say five to 10 years before they die, but they are wonderful for attracting uh, pollinators. And uh, the smell is wonderful. What is that back there? That's something I bought at the Alachua County Master Gardener oh, sale. That's beautiful. It, isn't that cool? It's a um, Virginia it? knotweed. Weed. Walk right down this way. Okay. Virginia knotweed. Virginia knotweed. <laughs> yeah. The red, um, right? The red one? Yeah. Wow, it's gorgeous. Look at the leaves. I don't have a, a, a sign on it yet. I had to keep the bucket because the bucket had the oh, information on it. Oh. Native. It's a native. <laughs> it's native here? Yeah, okay. to the eastern part of the United States. I had never seen it before. It's but beautiful. sure enough. And even the leaves have interesting markings. I know, little patterns to them. Yeah. Wow. This is a, called Dayflower, and it has little purple flowers on it. Another native. You can eat the flowers. Oh. Uh, what else do I have in here? This is a variegated angel trumpet. Oh. has not bloomed or grown much for me, so I'm not sure what the color of the flower is. Right. Uh, that was a gift from somebody. So they need sun too, right? Yeah, and that might be part of the issue. There may be too much shade in here. Yeah. 
the one you gave me is really tall, but it never flowered. Oh, not yet. It will. Yeah, but I, I think I need to move it. Yeah. It's kind of in an area that gets more sun in the front, mm -hmm. which is why I put it there. I just planted them because they were going to die. You gave me so much. <laughs> I thought they're, they're going to die before I figure out where to put them. Yeah, I'm glad so they I made it. So I just planted them, but... Um, well, I, because this is somewhat shaded, I was trying to figure out what I could grow in here that would tolerate shade and still give me some fruit. And I do have a couple little grapefruit trees in here. Oh, They're babies. Yeah. And I think whoever gave them to me might have grown them from seeds. So I can't swear that they will definitely produce anything mm. edible. They may or may not. Yeah. I have a peach tree that Jason mm. gave me, mm -hmm. but it was from seed. Yes. And I wonder. I think I got one from him too. Yeah. <laughs> So this area over here is my um, cactus garden area. Oh, nice. And so the cactus garden area came about as a result of a huge rose bush that was in the center of this garden that died. And I was trying to figure out what would tolerate the heat and the sun, because this gets sun all year round. And I had all of these cactus in pots, and I thought, I'm just going to plant them and see what survives the winter. So. What you see are plants that survive the winter. Can I? You can walk right on in. Okay. So there are some things that are edible in here. Oh, okay. I have a um, cactus called Nopalis. This is Nopalis. Back there. And um, yes, you could use that in uh, stir fries. Um, it ha it, Nopalis is no spines. Oh. So, and then I also have a Peruvian apple cactus, which is this big one right here to your left. Okay. And the fruit on it is edible. Oops. Yeah, that's right. Just be careful you don't. Yeah, yeah. So that that's an edible. I understand a lot of your fruit, cactus fruits are edible. Huh. So um, there's also prickly pear cactus, which I understand the that fruit one? on this. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks very much like that other one. Yes, it does. <laughs> A little different though. Yeah. This, now this has got to watch. They do have little spines. Right, right. And then I have a night blooming cirrus, which you don't eat, but um, oh, I've seen them. It looks like it may have even bloomed last night. So the here is here. a spent bloom. Yeah. The I, moment the sun hits them, the blooms go down. I've seen them on Facebook. They're yes. so beautiful. And the reason why it's so red is because it's here in the sun. And it, it tolerates that, although it looks a little burnt in places, it does tolerate the sun. Right. Um, not too much else that's edible. There's aloe in here. Of course, aloe people use for sunburns. Right. This particular aloe has gorgeous orange flowers when it blooms. I think there's a little one there in the corner. Yeah, different type of aloe. Oh, okay. Yeah, different, different type. What's this one here? Uh, that one is um, not native to our area, and I don't know the name of it. I tried looking it up mm -hmm. and was unable to find the exact name for it. Okay. So the area of the world it came from, there were like six native cactus, and none of these look like it. So oh. I'm not sure what <laughs> the name is. And then you have the little rose, which I noticed here. In yes, the front, I have the lots of rose bushes surrounding the area, and I try to grow the old-fashioned um roses not so they don't last very long the blooms don't last long but they are scented uh -huh. and uh they come back every year and they're fairly carefree i don't spray them or do anything to them to um to kill bugs i just you know survival of the fittest the yeah. other rose bushes there is you can kind of see mm -hmm. that large cactus <laughs> yeah pretty good size and I, then I've got some sages growing around the outside, and I don't know the names of all of these because people, some of them were cuttings that people gifted me, and I, I uh, grew cuttings, so I can't really say for sure. I think I have this one. Mm. This one in, in the back, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, did you get that from Marnie? I think it was. Could be. Yeah. I got I, cuttings, and they were in a pot, and they started kind of curling down the pot. As mm. soon as I put it in the ground, yeah, they took started. Off. Yep. Yeah, took off. They were happy in the sun, of course. <laughs> Ooh, and look what's in the back. So that is a cannabis hibiscus. And because the leaves look like marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to get a little not. closer. And this just started blooming in the last couple of weeks. It's just been like puttering along there. Uh, almost all of them that I have, I have several plants, are grown from cuttings. Hibiscus family is easy to grow from cuttings. And before they open, the blooms look black. 
and then they open up to this dark maroon. Wow, that's interesting. What is that? So this is called Cat Whiskers, and this was a gift from somebody. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that lovely? And then the um, sage right next to it. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a cut leaf cone flower. And I don't have, I may have one flowering in the backyard, mm -hmm. but they have lovely yellow flowers. And that was a staple for Native Americans. You could eat that. You can, uh, it's also called Suchon or Sochon. Uh -huh. Sochon. Do you have purple cone flower? That's supposed to be native. But I did, but it seems like it doesn't like our humidity. Yeah. yeah. So this is one of the few palladiums that is still looking lovely, but you can see how huge these yeah, are. Yeah, they're beautiful. They're just magnificent, the size. Yeah. So palladiums come back. Mine do. Yes, some people dig them up. If you live further north, you're going to have to dig them up and bring them in. But I mulch over the top of them with a lot of leaves, and they do fine all winter. Mm -hmm. So this this has a lot of butterfly type material in it. Um, the red sage, the blue sages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had some Cleome flowers, but they died down. I don't know why. I have some porter weed in there, and then there's oh, a lot of um, four o'clocks in here. Right. But they're not. Uh, of course, they're not open right now. Yeah. I think when I came in spring, the, the four o'clocks were. Yeah, yeah, you must have been here before. It got too hot and sunny. Yeah. Um, so this area up here is very shaded. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I can grow things like this pretty impatient. Mm -hmm. um, they don't look spectacular right now because we haven't had a lot of rain. Right. But uh, pretty double impatient. I have a lot of gingers growing up in here. So oh, these this, are gingers. Yeah, wow. these, I thought it was banana plants. <laughs> <laughs> these gingers, um, I actually came in a, um, wow. a vegetable box I bought, and uh, I planted them because there was no way I could eat all the gingers. Now it was labeled ginger, but everyone who looks at them says that's a turmeric. Some oh, variety of turmeric. So this is the one that you can dig up and eat. Yes, the, the and, and I can dig up and eat, yeah, turmeric, gingers, all, anything in the ginger family is edible. It may not be tasty, right? but it has some part that's edible. So it would be the roots on these. Some plants, it's the flowers. Sometimes it's the stems. Uh, sometimes it's the tubers. But there's different parts of gingers that you can eat. Right. Uh, hmm. I have a lot of ornamental gingers up here, but I don't have anything blooming right now. Uh, so I see that's a ginger, right? The yes. variegated. Oh, and look, it's that. starting to bloom. Yeah. I'm so excited. That's the first bloom I've had on that, so I have no clue what it's going to look like. Mm. We'll see. <laughs> well, <that was> <laughs> yeah, I know. There's, there's one tiny bloom. So this is a cucuma, which is a, a oh, hidden, yes. hidden ginger. So is that your second bloom? Uh, so I got one no. bloom. It was like this big. Oh wow! You got it. You have a special one. It's it's a hybrid. I got it oh. from Tom. Is it? Tom? Yeah, I had I have one of Tom's. It's died down already, but that had the huge bloom. Right, on. and, and then the, the second one came up though, but it's, it's already dying. Oh yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of different different ginger varieties in here. So they around. definitely do like the, the shade. Oh, yes. You okay. want to grow gingers in the shade. There's only one ginger you want to grow in the sun, and that's a Thai ginger called a Galangal ginger. Mm -hmm. That will tolerate sun, but the others really want the shade. They want good soil. There's a lot of leaf compost in here, um, and that's what they like. So I see you don't use nuggets. <laughs> Uh, well, you can. You know. If I had lots of money, I'd go out and yeah, buy right. nuggets. I got a truckload of pine bark, and I think I spent 400 bucks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I won't do that again. <laughs> Ooh, Chinese lanterns. Ah, really tall. Yeah. <laughs> Just now blooming. There's a variegated one. You can get a variegated leaf one. Um, there's, let's see, they call them parlor maples. Uh -huh. There's a lot of common names. I think, um, what is it, Grassroots Nursery? They might have them recently. Right and they called it the parlor. Yeah. Parlor maple, yes. So the fire spike can tolerate 
the little shade. Oh yeah, mine seem to do better in the shade than full sun. Yeah. You can grow them in full sun, but you really gotta have moisture in the soil for them right. to do well. Well, I planted them close to where water comes down a lot when it rains. That helps. So I figured, you know, hopefully they'll be. Oh, is that the moth that you were talking about? Mm, that's a skipper butterfly. No, that's okay. a skipper. It kind of looks like a little bird. It does. <laughs> So this little horseshoe shaped area right here, I basically just took fire spike, mm -hmm. cut it into pieces, laid out a soaker hose, stuck the fire, fire spike on either side of the soaker hose, and boom, it yeah. grows. It roots very easily. Yeah. So, and then inside of there I have coleus and um, some little fig trees and more of the cannabis hibiscus. We can walk around to the other side if you like so I can show you those. Maybe see, you know, maybe I can get one up close. That's such There's a one. beautiful <laughs> color. Yeah. Let me hold it up for oh, you. Okay. Look at that color. That is gorgeous. That is beautiful. I love the color, but you know, I don't see any butterflies coming oh, to it. Oh, really? Now maybe, maybe they will, or they do, I don't know. Come on here to the front and I'll show you the beautiful one back here. They got me the guinea. Oh, oh. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think this early they would bother. Oh, they had been bad. So here it is. So I've taken a lot of cuttings off of this area, so it's not as full as it was at one time, but there's a lot of variety of coleus, coleus in there. And um, so it, it, not only do you have the beautiful flowers, but then you get this lovely color variation with the coleus leaves. And I see, okay, two things. Yes, ma'am. What is this sweet potato vine? Or? Yes, okay. it's an ornamental. Now, I've tried eating them and they don't have any taste. They're oh, very okay. bland, but they will die back in the winter and come back in the spring. So oh, they do come back? Yep, they oh. come back. They come back. Where Easy do you to find those? I never see that in the big box store. I do not remember where I first bought them. Huh. They used to sell them as ground covers. Right, right. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. You? I have a lot of Virginia creeper. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and I what understand. about the, the one with the little oh, orange? Um, a colfia. It's a type of, yeah, little cigar plant. Oh, um, I think I've heard that, cigar plant. Yeah, too. but it's a colfia. Oh, nice. And um, I don't know what else. Beep. There's a few gingers in here, little right. dancing girl gingers. I see some coleus that's just starting to mm -hmm. starting to decline in the back. Yep. yep. Did you go to the IFAS? I did. Yeah. I bought some of these from the IFAS sale. I did too. I think maybe that one. Yeah, they're, they were beautiful. I definitely want to. I wanna, love the colors. I definitely want to do that again next year. Yep. And the guy across the street was really, um, you know, commenting on them that his grandmother used to grow coleus. So I was thinking it might be nice to get him one little plant <laughs> <laughs> if I remember. <laughs> um, they root so easily. Yeah. So before it freezes, I'll take more cuttings of these and root them and keep them over the winter until next spring. So what do you do during the winter? Do you t put them in your garage or do you, you might have uh, a, I have, you a, might little, have, a I have a small greenhouse. Oh, okay. I didn't have a, a greenhouse till last year and I thought, oh, I've lived this long without it. You know, I probably won't put that much in it. I filled it up. I dug <laughs> up plants. I took cuttings. I had it so full that I couldn't walk into the greenhouse. I literally <laughs> yeah. opened the door to the greenhouse, stood outside with a hose, squirted everything and closed the door and said, good luck, see you in the spring. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think I would fill up a greenhouse, but I did. Wow. I took a lot of cuttings. What's that one there with the kind of edgy? That's another coleus. That's a coleus, that's yeah. beautiful. Different. Yeah, they're all a little different. And then I have um, three baby fig trees in here that I start. All of these are from cuttings. Uh -huh. And the leaves are black because we've had so much rain that yeah. I have a sooty mold growing on them, unfortunately. This one had some fruit on it, and this cutting is only two years old. And this is not in full old. sun, is it? No, it's not. But it's getting more sun because we had a giant tree oh, uh, see, yeah. stem taken out. So there's more sun in here than there used to be. Right. Which isn't helping the coleus because it likes the shade. Right. I have Jason also. I have two little fig trees. <laughs> and one of them dies, I guess, because it's either too much water or too much sun. And mm. then it comes back. Immediately I start seeing a little green thing coming. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
So, but I think I have to plant it in ground. It's just, yes. yeah. Oh, look at the butterflies. Look at the butterflies coming. Look at that. the yellow sulfur visiting on well, the Well, if side. my fire spike, I would see, I'd be happy. <laughs> <laughs> they just, they're not aware that I'm trying yet. <laughs> well, I'll take you around to the backyard and then you'll go get you filled with butterflies. Okay. Here's another one. This is full of butterflies. And this is the caladium that... Yes, this is called tapestry. Mm -hmm. um, I just bought these from the Gainesville Women's Garden Club uh, this year and planted it. And they, they're very lovely. And behind it is bromeliads that are in the ground. Now they don't necessarily get their nourishment from the soil but they will stay there and there they will be evergreen and I grow the variety that are called fingertip or fingernail bromeliad so right. you see the color and they right. are a little more winter hardy yeah, than shy. the other um, bromeliads so and then there's some walking iris back there right. and some other types of gingers Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so more azaleas. <laughs> more azaleas. I have some bromeliads too. Uh, and I think it's like you said, the with the tips that are red. Yes. The fingernail bromeliad. And I planted them. I had no clue whether I had planted them correctly or not. But they're alive. <laughs> Basically they, they they grow in trees normally. Right. I did plant so, them close to yes. I have you um, see the queen's tears. Oh yeah, back there. Back there in the in the tree. Oh. And the person who gave them to me says, oh, this will multiply quickly. That's what she said. She said she had them covered all around the tree. I think once they're happy, yeah. yeah. But as you can see, most of these are in the shade. They're not in sun. So they, they are something that would grow on a tree. And there's a... These are ground uh, oh. gingers. Um, oh, peacock. Yes, peacock. Yes, peacock. 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 <laughs> I could think of gingers. it either. And I have several different varieties in there, but um, they're not real obvious right now. And this is a kunti, isn't it? No, no? that's actually a fern. Uh, oh. or ho it's called holly fern. Oh. And it does stay evergreen, though. So that's nice. It's one of the few that aren't going to die back in the winter months. And they like the shade? They do. Oh. I had some that accidentally got in the sun, and they, they died down. Oh, that's so good to they know. They didn't like that. I have a lot of shaded areas, so <laughs> I'm always interested. And you gave me a teeny tiny native fern. Mm. And it's doing great. Good. Yes. <laughs> so I was I, so happy. He's like, yay. I also have pineapple growing back here. This oh, is a pineapple yeah. with the dragonfly. Oops. Oh, I see. Dragonfly on it. Oh, so, pineapple seeing. in the shade. It seems like more people that I've talked to recently said they did better in the shade. I had oh, mine really? in full sun and they, didn't, they weren't happy. <gasps> So, so I'll move, somebody gave me one, maybe oh, I'll move maybe it. Maybe yours will be happier than mine. Well, maybe I'll move it, it's still in a pot. So and anyway, it takes uh, years for it to... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Um, I've got... And that's the tears? Queen's tears. Queen's tears. Queen's tears. Yep. Yeah, I inherited a lot of um, laurel oaks. Oh yeah. I know, I know. They're I wish not, I could. they're not good oaks. I this is this is a live oak, thank yeah. goodness. I have one live oak, that's it. The rest of them are but you know, it's just too expensive to cut them all down. No. Oh my goodness. Yeah, once you have trees are you have to think carefully about your trees. Yeah. And um, if we had done things right the first time we probably would have totally cleared our property of what we had and started fresh. Because we had a lot of trash trees on our property too. Yeah. But then you have the stump, so it's not so easy. You still have the roots. Right, but I just, I make a planting bed where the roots were. Because just to have your roots removed, mm -hmm, to yeah. have the roots, roots removed is even a bigger issue. So right. you basically just build planting beds around the, the roots and let it go. Right. So the caladiums here uh -huh. are still More tapestry, well. yeah. They were more of them, and they've, they've slowly died back. And then I have the walking iris back there. Right. And there's more azaleas scattered around. Right. A few natives back there. Beautyberries. You can see the berries on the beautyberry. 
Oh, uh, I see, yeah. Yeah, there's a southern magnolia, which is actually um, a native okay. tree. I Oops, what did I do? 